Hi. I don't hello, think I'll hello, talk hello, any hello, louder hello, than that, probably. I, nah, it's, hey. Hey. I, always, I swear to God I'm not going to yell. I'm always a loud guy. I, I, hey. I swear to God I'm not going to let Hey. Go. All right. There we go. All right. Yeah. Oh, we're here. Hey, yeah. everybody. Where are we? We're at Sweetwater Gear Fest 2023. It's Blake and I from the Tome Mob. And, of course, Paul Reed Smith. How you feeling, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, here, I'm, uh, well, well, it's, uh, I'm here with the Tone Mob. The Tone Mob and 60 Cycle Hum. <laughs> yep. We're going to double publish this thing so you can watch so, it on both so channels. So is it 60 Cycle Hum and the Tone Mob simultaneously? Simultaneously. simultaneously. Yep. Two different media outlets together again with Paul. Simultaneously. 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 Okay, so that would mean I'm Paul and Reed and Smith all simultaneously. Yes. Okay, yes. Uh-huh. Okay, yep, okay. yep, yep. I'm Ryan. This is Paul. This is Blake. This is Reed. I'm Ryan. This is Smith. And, uh, this and, uh, is Blake. You just outdid me. That's great. <laughs> That's really good. That's good. That's good. That, yeah. was, that, was, that was good. So I don't know if you remember, Paul, but we did this with you seven, eight years ago. 2016. It was Blake's it first was pre-COVID. NAM. pre-COVID. My first NAM ever. It was my second. My first NAM ever. interview at NAM ever. My first. Did I say something wrong to you? At that first, your first. Yes, interview? this is revenge. It wasn't my first interview. It was my first NAM interview. But uh, no, you said all the right things. Okay, good. Yeah, I remember us having a great time, and the comment section was divided because we were we were pretty rambunctious. We came in with this attitude like, "Hey, we don't know if we're going to do this very long. Might as well burn some bridges and have some fun." Uh, what, why was it divided? Because half the comment section was like, why were you so mean to Paul? And the other half you of the comment section was like, why was Paul so mean to you? And we were like, none well, of well, that is as true. As my mother says, Paul, you and your aggressive humor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I you know, that. I, 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 yeah, sorry. Look, I've had so many bad things happen in my life that all I do is make jokes all the time. It's, it's terrible. It's the only way to get through it. It's the only well, if, if you're not having a bad phone call, somebody calling you to tell you you've got a problem, I think you should be having be playful. My wife told me if I wasn't silly, it was a deal breaker. And she was talking about whether she'd marry me or not. <laughs> and I was like, you want silly? Oh, you have no idea what you've asked for. Yeah. Oh, she gets silly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do the full silly. The full yeah. silly. But I, I remember just having a great time hanging out with you. Yeah, it was fun. We had a fun time. No matter what the comment section thought what was going on, I remember having a great time. And when we found out that you were going to be here, and I was like, Blake's going to be here? Let's let's do it let's again. Let's do, do it again. Okay, So here good. we are. Uh Blake, do you so want to I'm the this? divider between the two of you. Is that what it is? You're, Last time you were the meat in the sandwich. Right. No, 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 no. No, it's a grilled cheese sandwich. I'm the cheese yeah, in the, the grilled cheese. And the cheese. cheese. You're, You're right. You're right. right. He remembers better than I do. Well, I feel like the cheese in a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> you were using one of my analogies that you got wrong. <laughs> well, it's not the first time. I'm sure I've ripped things from you before no, that I, I did incorrectly. So. Yeah. But the cheese in the grilled cheese is def- definitely one of my. That's not like the white in the middle of the Oreo or something. <laughs> that just seems like kind of weird to say. I won't say that one. I don't think in this scenario you're the white in the middle of the Oreo, unless it's a vanilla Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> that was out of bounds. Oh, you oh just, no. No, that was a comment session. Here we go. Oh, comment boy. section. Oh, was that's that great. out I, of bounds? Are we talking about anything guitars? Yeah, well, we're holding the brand new thing here, the new hotness. Why don't you tell us about it? What do we got here? It's a guitar. Paul trying to keep us on it's track. It's a guitar. It's a guitar. Good luck. Made by... Hi, right, look. Okay. The problem with these kinds of pickups that make this kind of sound is go. that they hum so loud that in some clubs the hum is louder than the guitar. So we had the a sixty me- cycle hum. It's a big uh, it's, problem. It's, it's not just that; it's it's a buzz too. Mm-hmm. And we had a meeting, and we said, "Well, if we're going to make a guitar that that goes after this character of sound, what do you want to do?" And I said, "I want to make them hum canceling." And but the problem is, stacks in general don't work. Mm-hmm. They work, but they don't sound as good as the original thing. They don't and respond I wanted quite something right. that sounded yeah. better. And there had been proof in the industry that it was possible. Um, like a jazz bass has two pickups on at the same time. They're in humbucking, and it sounds like a single coil. So it is possible mm-hmm. to do. So we did that research and came up with those pickups. And let me tell you something. That's a very, very complicated piece of tooling. I mean, just the fact that the high string – you know, doesn't get stuck over there. Mm-hmm. God knows how many other things we did, but there, there's a reason for all this material in there. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a fully new pickup. Like it, it's complete, not an off the shelf part. At oh all. no, there's there's not there's nothing generic out of a catalog on this thing. Nothing. 
Now, you went with bar magnets instead of like normal round pull pieces. I'm assuming there was a reason for that. Yeah, because I didn't want, if they were round, I would have had twice the string pull. There would have been four pickups mm -hmm. underneath here. I wanted half the string pull per side. Got it. So that it was this only the amount of string pull of a, of a single round magnet. Now, there's... And there's little, I haven't piece, had a, little pieces of steel in between. That's what's in between. I was about yeah. to ask that. There's there's little slugs in between yeah. there. It changes the inductance of the pickup. It sounds great. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like magic. <laughs> it's kind of like your shirt. I don't My know shirt. It, it's kind of it's like kind of like I don't know what it means, but it sounds magic. Right, right. It's provocative. Science is real, mm -hmm. and it's magic at the same time. time Magnets. Science how do they work? Science is real. I mean, who would say science is fake? I mean, you got to really think about this for a minute. You wore the shirt. I, I wore, it's a band shirt. It's, it's for They Might Be Giants. Uh, I went and saw them play a, a month were or so great? ago. Oh, they were fantastic. Oh, that's why you were on the show. Yeah, that's why okay. I was at the show. Uh, but I got stopped in the Home Depot parking lot. And a guy was like, it's, it's crazy that you have to wear a shirt like that these days. And I was like, hey, I don't wear the shirt as a political statement. I work for a, for a band that I like. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell him that? No, I was just like, yeah, yeah. And then I got on my car and left. Mm hmm <laughs> you could have stood up for yourself for a second. It's not Ryan Stein. I don't think he was attacking me. I was. I didn't need to stand up for myself. I was attacking you. Go on. Now what's the next thing? What's the next thing? So, so, this is why I have fond memories of exactly. our interview eight did, years ago. You didn't change. I didn't change. No, COVID I didn't want to change. Us, We're so. just rolling the same way we always so what, do. So what's the, the model name and number of this? We haven't well, mentioned it. NF53 for the narrow field. And... Um, we spent a lot of time on every little detail, whatever be neck shape or body design or you, the pickups or the way it's wired and God knows how many other things we worked really hard on. And we're happy with the instrument. We took it to Nashville and let all the Nashville guys try it. And we got a, pretty much 100% more than acceptance. Mm. People like, uh-oh, no hum, no noise, same tone, sounds thicker and bigger, go now. I feel like... An Acceptance is a fairly uh, vanilla term to well, use if now, you're going to market this thing. I, th I feel like you should. That's not the way it works. Throw an enthusiastic. Now, hang on a minute. Now, now, now we'll go deep for a minute. Uh, it's very important. When ADATS came out, the whole market accepted it as a new way to recording. It mm. got permission of the market. Mm. It doesn't have permission anymore. That's what we're looking for here, permission, permission from the market. Permission from the market, from your viewers to think that this is good enough that they'd actually spend the money. Mm. That so actually that, uh, goes so back to something we talked about. acceptance is a big deal. How many products come out that die in people's arms? And it's happened to us. We've, we've, we came out with the NF53. Um, not the NF53. We came out with the um, NF3. And we got Guitar of the Year from all the magazines across the world as the Guitar of the Year couldn't give them away, had to quit making them. Jimmy Herring picked one up. You can't find one now. Right. right. So, I mean, he got us acceptance. Uh, that acceptance in my world is, a, is, is not a vanilla term. It's a big use, deal. To use an Oreo cookie term. Um, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, a, it's really important. I want acceptance. I want acceptance of this video that the people thought it was uh, informative and entertaining or whatever it is. I don't want it to be like most CDs where people turn it off in the middle of first song and say, yeah, listen to it. I mean, it's not cool. I want, you know, Dark Side of the Moon got accept worldwide acceptance. Right. It's been I, accepted. Yeah, well, that would be a very generic term for a could, very powerful thing that happened. Could we call it exceptional? Yeah. Oh. Well, actually, a little wordplay there? Actually, it, Exceptional, it, spelled it is, with an A. It is exceptional. Right. I think the record is exceptional. It's extraordinary, actually. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary. You want to go down this road? We keep going. <laughs> I'm not sure which I'll road go down it is. Roads, I'll go down trails. I'll get on the freeway with you wherever Ooh. we're going. I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> what about somebody help me? <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. I need help. Send help. Can yeah. somebody please get me out of this? Interview? We locked the no, door. Paul. No, no, no don't stuck. touch me. I have, I have space issues. You can't do that. You folded my hat earlier. <laughs> I did fold your hat. Yeah. You don't have space issues. I'm the one with space issues. <laughs> oh, we're <laughs> huggers. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, uh, no, no, no. we're squeezers. Don't, don't touch me. <laughs> that's that's going to be uh, the quote from the video. I'm going to make the title. Don't, don't, don't touch, touch me. me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Actually... It's interesting. 
when you're in Japan, the way you acknowledge the other person is by bowing. It was an honor to be with you. Mm -hmm. In America, you're hugging your buddy be to tell them that they're loved and accepted. I mean, it's very, very accepted. normal to take all the jokes out of it. But all societies have a little bit different way of doing it, you know? And um, have you ever noticed a non-hugger? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They'll hug everybody. They will. Yeah. Yep. Get a few they, shots. The hugger in them. gets drunk. He ain't hugging. Yeah. Anymore. They have to get all their hugs out once <laughs> yeah, once they get their yeah, inhibitions yeah. out. You yeah. Know? So are they going to ask me another question about guitars? I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> Why would we? I don't know. That's like, the silliest yeah. thing. Are you ready for your you questions ready? that are not about guitars? I have questions I that are not about guitars. I want about guitars. I have one about guitars, and I I'll have. I'll ask questions about guitars. I don't have any questions that are not guitar related. You don't? I don't. You got those out of your system? I do. Okay. It's just like who's on first. I have to save mine for last, but I do okay, have a question okay. about right. the uh, the wiring in this. Yeah. So it has I, wires in it. You're right. Are there wires in it? Yeah, there are wires. Or, or is it you know one of them newfangled? Things? Yes, it's, it's a wired guitar. It's a wired guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Where what about to, what's the question? Were there any considerations that you took in designing that harness? Because I'm learning more about that stuff le lately, you know, and how it, they work as different filter circuits, et cetera, et cetera. Or did you go more traditional with it? Or how did you, what did you do there? It's very traditional with a lot of very gentle, sophisticated tweaks. Mm -hmm. Exactly what the value of the pot is. Um, there's so many things about it that were gentle but sophisticated tweaks to make sure the guitar sounded magic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take but one thing to ruin a guitar. If the third fret's in the wrong place, you're done. It's mm -hmm. over. It doesn't take much. Yeah. And I'm telling you, when you're wiring it, it's really important. The pot value is really important. Exactly how it was wired was we would make little teeny adjustments and then do a shootout and little adjustments and do a shootout. What yeah. is the pot value? It's, it's not a straight value. You have to go measure it. I, I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I know I can tell you we worked on it for months. So it's not just an off-the-shelf, like, 250 or 500 yeah. or something? Yeah. Wow. Look at that. I didn't know you could get in between with pots. I didn't know <laughs> sure you could. Sure you can. You can, you can take do a pot. Pots. You can take a pot, and you can dumb it down to the right value. In a, in a Silver Sky, we put a 300K pot in, and we dumb it down to 274K because that's exactly what was in John's Precise. original guitars. Wow. I just learned something after almost a decade of doing guitar content. <laughs> <laughs> I just buy off-the-shelf parts. In my mind, there's 250, there's 500, and there's one meg. Well, and that's if you're going to build you okay, know, a lot way, of guitars. That's not the way it works, though. You can buy a 250K pot, but some of them go on and some jump on the go. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. You can't just buy an off-the-shelf part. It doesn't work that way. It's like having an off-the-shelf purple T-shirt. <laughs> it is off the shelf. You can't though. just buy an off the shelf it's purple t shirt. T -shirt. Come well, on. I have to buy off the shelf parts because I don't okay. have factories and stuff. Wait a minute. You can buy different value pots and you can you can dumb a, a 500K down to 250 all day long. All you do is put a 500K resistor. Oh, so, it, okay. It's 250K. The next now I second. understand. Now I understand. Are you following it now? Now I am. I okay. just caught up. I was wondering, like, why isn't Ryan. Come on, Ryan. Come on. You've been the, doing this a the, long, long the term time. term in all the audio industry is slugging the pot. So so what happens in these That means a different thing pieces. in California. <laughs> I, Come on, Blake. We're having a serious know, conversation that was really here. good. I got to think about that. That was really good. Slug That's the name of my new doom band. <laughs> it's like, is that like adding extra THC to the pot? I think you so. slug the pot? Yeah, it's when you put the resin in there. I don't know. Get it sticky like it's a slug. Do right. you take... Blonde Lebanese hash oil, and you drip it on the pot. We're then you get getting back on topic. It? That's my understanding. Okay, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. you slug the pot. That's great. That's yeah. not what I meant. So, <laughs> what, what, slugging the pot. What that means is, in the audio industry, they used to have 600 ohm outputs and inputs on all the audio gear, and they would have to put a resistor on it to make it exactly the right output impedance and input impedance. It was slugging it. So that's just a. Uh, an engineering term for the for the custom builders of audio equipment, and I got it from that. Very nice. But w everybody knows a 250k pot sounds different than a 500. Yeah. Well, and not everybody knows. I, I 
and I, 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 okay, I if you have a Strat and you put a 500k pot in, it's going to be brighter than a 250 in it, and I, that's commonly known. Come on. Yeah, I know. Even I know with that. With a purple shirt, you but should I had, know that. I had comments on on one of the videos that I did. I, I swapped a Jazzmaster style guitar from 500 up to the traditional one meg, and people in the comments were like, "That's not going to make any difference." I'm like. You can Absolutely. hear in the video that it did make a. Di it's like super bright now. Like I don't know what to tell you. You didn't listen. In an original broad, uh, broadcaster or Esquire, the the switch down is the tone control disconnected. In the middle, the tone control is hooked up. It's not anywhere near as bright. And the other way is a capacitor ground that makes gets rid of all the high end. The original way the Fender's single pickup guitars are wired that did a version of that. Oh, look at that. So right you're now. right. The internet will tell Leo Fender he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> they actually do that. That's the yeah. sad part. There's What? They will say that. Yeah. That Leo Fender didn't know what he was doing? They will say that. Right. I'm They're... sorry. The Stratocaster, the Telecaster, completely designed a state of grace. He didn't play guitar. Right. Mm -hmm. and, but what a genius move to be able to interview people to figure out what the, what the, the future of the guitar industry was. Come on. <laughs> I almost, I almost wonder if like we should only play guitars made by people who don't play guitar. Like it's like Ted it's, McCarty didn't play guitar. I was gonna say that's what most of us do. Because without me playing guitar, I would have, I would be clueless about it. I'm not that good at. I mean, I'm good at interviewing people. And and Ted used to Ted McCarty used to interview all the artists in New York once a year, and all the artists would go to Leo's shop and he would interview them about what they wanted. And I think that that's brilliant. But it's I think. Um, Joel Danzig from Hammer said that when Leo designed the Stratocaster, it was a state of grace. I think he's, I think he's right. Mm -hmm. It's just, and by the way, they were done with Strats for a while. When they were making Jazz Masters and Jazz Jaguars and all that stuff, the Strat was out of business till Hendrix picked one up, and then I think's changed a little, bit. a little bit, a little bit. bit. Yeah. It, it seemed like Strats became a little bit more popular for a while. A little teeny a little, bit, for a little while. Yeah. For, yeah. for a minute, Les yeah. Pauls were kind of out of business till this yeah. guy Slash picked one up. That changed a little bit. Maybe James Page too. Maybe, 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 maybe when John Mayer and Carlos picked up and Howard Lease and Al Demiola and. Chet McCarty and David Grissom, all those guys picked up PRS's things. There are so them. many names in this world, and we could list them all. Speaking of artists, <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. So when you you've obviously worked with some of the biggest Somebody artists on the planet, get me out of this. This Send is help. a real question. This is a real question. Okay, cool. Yeah. When you're starting with an artist for the first time, you're sitting down with them to start that designing so a guitar. Much, that was so much fun. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> What is one of the first questions you ask them? What do they want? Just what are straight goals? up? Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. What do you want? What do you... But it's not that blatant. It's like, all right, Miles, what do you want? Come on, it's Miles, not like, tell no, me what no, you yeah, want. It's, it's not like thing. that. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Miles, let's work on a design together. Okay. And then we start getting into it. And, you know, Beverly, who's in charge of our artist relations, is very graceful about starting the beginnings of those conversations. She knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. But it's what do you want? How can we help you? How can we be your guitar company? We want to make tools for you to make a living on. And in the end, other people believe in your vision and they'll buy them too. Look, when we released the Silver Sky, we John Mayer had set it up. We were getting 1,000 likes a minute. Not 1,000 views a minute, 1,000 right. likes mm -hmm. a minute. It blew up our website. It was over. Shut down. Just shut it right down. Right. The servers and are red was, hot. He was doing the whole thing off his phone without an assistant. Right. Are you, the question is, is he that good? You know what the answer is? Yeah. With that kind of social media stuff, he's right. that good. He's mm -hmm. good at self-marketing. Absolutely. I mean, he's, hey, I'm not so, saying he's not good at guitar. He obviously now, that is. that was simplistic. Yeah. <laughs> self-marketing. He's brilliant. Brilliant. At using you know this format to be able to get people information that they desire. We'll, Absolutely use, we'll use your word, acceptable. No, acceptance. Acceptance. I didn't say acceptable. You're barely acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> that could also be the title, barely acceptable. Barely acceptable. Yeah, that could work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul, I've got one more question for you. Yeah. That you, I, I've been I, dying I, to ask you. I this know. Question. Here it comes. I know. I know. This is the one. This, this is, is the, the one I've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Here you go. What is your favorite kind of pizza? We're good to see if it changed from last time. I said either pepperoni or mariposa last time, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to say straight 
really good slice of cheese. All right. Just slice of cheese. All right. I like I like to do these updates once in a while because people do change their opinions you occasionally. Know, there's something about a slice of cheese pizza that just hits completely different that's, than all other pieces of pizza. That's right. It has a completely different flavor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I like it with pineapple on it, but no. Yeah. Slice Good of cheese. Time. That's how you test them. It's the way. So I'm going to wind up for my question now. Okay. Uh, I like to spend time on the internet where the trolls hang out. And one under of those, the bridge. Yes, mm-hmm. under the bridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the places I hang out is on Reddit in a group called r slash guitar circle jerk. And I told them that I was going to interview you. And I, I asked them what I should ask you. And I got a lot of people. Did you just say what you Yeah, just, you, yes, yeah, you yes, heard that Yes, yes you heard yeah. all the words correctly. Oh, um, that hurt. This is. <laughs> that really hurt. <laughs> Our guitar circle jerk. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, stop. Stop. I'm hurting him. Just <laughs> the it, existence it, of you guys. Edit, edit, go on, go. <laughs> a lot of them brought up the Tonewood debate. And so I want to. There's no s- debate. I want to steer there's the question. There's no debate. I know. I want to steer the question a little Actually, bit. Actually, there is a debate, but in my is, head, there's, there's no al- debate. On the internet, there's always a debate. I know that, uh, uh, so, uh, was it a video or an article that you were part of a while back, kind of blew up on the internet, you talking about Tonewood. And I got the sense that your point was, of course, the material the guitar is made out of matters. Yeah. Of course it of course matters. it does. I think the spirit of what a lot of people think of in that direction is more, does the species of the tree really matter that much when, especially considering that guitars can be made out of other materials and things like that. Yeah. My, my twist on this question, because we could sit here and debate all day, mahogany, maple, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Are there any woods? I would leave. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it. I, I would leave. Want to do that. Are there any woods that are not tone woods? Ooh. Balsa wood. Balsa wood. Hasn't Gibson used balsa? Balsa wood. Balsa. <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer. Well, it's certainly not structurally uh, lignum sound vitae, enough. Lignum vitae. Lignum vitae. I don't even know what that is. It's the stuff they used to make the bearings and ships out of um, so the water didn't come in with the uh, – Propeller shift. So, what would be what would um, your, really, what would be the tonal really characteristics? Heavy. It's really heavy, but what would be the tonal characteristics of balsa or a really light wood or ling- well, this I, lignum? I can't stuff tell that's you. Really heavy. Lignum vitae. I, I can't tell you what balsa wood is. I only assume that it would be really bad because it has no strength. It's right. really flexible. Mm-hmm. Well, so, they use it in surfboards because it's light. Yeah, that's, I'm familiar yeah, with, with I understand. Balsa. So, and they use it in model airplanes too. It's like, That's how I know about it. I used to make model airplanes. Really? Yes. Huh. I was how a you... kid too. You know, I actually didn't have white hair with a bald head at some point. I figured that's just how you were just. <laughs> that's the way, way, I, that's the way I came yeah. out to shoot. Yeah, that's yeah. great. What was your preferred brand of glue when you were making model airplanes? <laughs> you know, I'm going to. I'm gonna, I, 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 well, it was always DuPont Duco. That's what DuPont. everybody used. Yeah. DuPont Duco. That's yeah. what everybody used. Mm-hmm. That's it. Look. I'm going to answer your question sideways. I like it. All right. Okay. I think it should be the Home Depot challenge. I think that you should take all the guitar makers and a bunch of the trolls that think they know how to make guitars and go into Home Depot and make a guitar out of the parts in Home Depot. I love that. And I've been thinking about doing it, but we're never going to do it because it's kind of a waste of time. Did you know that... A lot of two by fours are made out of Adirondack spruce. They're made out of red spruce. I've never spruce. even heard that species before. Adirondack that, spruce. A, a, Adirondack spruce. It's it's a it's the most coveted wood for acoustic guitars you can get. Mm-hmm. You can buy two by fours at Home Depot made out of that. I stuff. I just built a shed out of that stuff. Apparently, yeah. Well, good. You should have glued it together and made an acoustic guitar out of it. So, to me, to me, you can. It's it's not about. It's not about exactly what wood species is. Although I had a choice when I was a young man to either trust the old guitar makers and use what they use or spend 10 years testing the woods and then start over again. I didn't have the 10 years to give. No one does. Well, actually, we've gone through all the species pretty much at this point. So we, we have given it. But what's fascinating for me is that, you know, I had to trust them and then go from there. And I think it was a good decision because I didn't have the 10 years to you know, experiment with all the woods. And when you're doing it, if you, you have to make it exactly identical, only change one wood to have find, find out what the impact is. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not so easy. Um, at one point, we made two guitars 
exactly at the same time, exactly at the same woods, exactly the same, and they sounded different, and we switched the parts, and they sounded the same. Not on the ones that we switched. When we switched the parts, the guitar still sounded the same. And that was fascinating to me that the wood did make a difference. Mm. Now, if you had had that experience in my old shop, we were like, why does this one sound this way and that sound way? It must be the parts we switch them. Didn't make change anything, which was fascinating. Mm. But I've had some experiences that tell me that it does make a difference. And quite frankly, I'll end it with this story. Stradivari, they always go, you know, the reason his violin sound goes so good was the finish. And you hear that for years. Mm -hmm. The reason it sounds so good is that there was more fungus in, in, in his instruments than other ones. The reason is because you find uric acid um, – in the wood, which they did because they tanned everything with sheep's urine back there um, in, that, in those times. That's, that was the common chemical. Um, this, that, and the other. The thing that really bothers me is nobody ever says the reason Stradivarius sounds so good is because the old man knew what he was doing. They never say it. It makes me crazy. I don't understand it. And I'm telling you that as if there was more fungus in his shop down than the guy up the street. I don't right, buy right. it. I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. I think he would have a field day if he was alive right now. All these private stock colors and everything else. That's not was not available at the time. Yeah. Oh, but it's available now. And I think he would go nuts. Look, clearly. He understood how to tune those boxes. Mm -hmm. He understood, understood how to get the amount of bow energy to turn into sound better than everybody else. As, as Zach Perlman said, the reason I play a, a Stradivarius is because when I play pianissimo, when I play really quiet, they can hear everything I did in the back corner of the concert hall without a microphone. And to me, it does make a difference. And I, to, to me, the woods do make a difference. And there's too many thousands of examples the problem with it doesn't make a difference is a single dimensional thinking. There's so many other people. Right. It, 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 There's so many other components. Yeah. And I want is that a swamp ash old telly or is that an older old right, telly? Right. Oh, the swamp ash words are wor worth more money. Why? Maybe they sound different. I have no idea. But uh, don't even get me started about uh, you know something. I'm just gonna the steam just comes. It's going. It's going. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, well, come, as. Don't take one of the major pieces of the puzzle away from me because you of think course. it's not important. By the way, if you came into the private stock room and I was going to give you a private stock, you'd pick out which woods do you think sound better, Paul, after all the bullshit that came out of your mouth I'd on the internet. I'd probably pick the color that I like. Okay, well, <laughs> okay. can somebody get me out of this? Okay, I want to I want to. We're done. A, this is over. A, I want to put a pin on that, and then you can you can agree or disagree with what I'm about to say, because believe it or not, I, I think I agree with you on Tonewood, because you mentioned Stradivarius. Like, what about his skill as a builder? And from what I've gathered from talking to various builders over the years, like, a factory guitar that's, you know, a $400 factory guitar is a $400 factory guitar, and they're just grabbing pieces of wood. But when you talk to a builder that's really spending the time with each piece, when they pick up a piece of wood, they can tap it, and they can hear how it rings, and they know it doesn't really matter. The species doesn't really matter, but the density, the weight, the resonance, those things that they can feel with their hands and experience as a, as a qualified builder, as an experienced builder, uh, as a builder that's found acceptance, they can make these informed uh, creative decisions as to what's going to build the guitar that they have in mind, what's going to make a guitar that's going to feel and sound a certain way. And people are going to fight in the comments like, well, after you put distortion and noise gates and compressors, does it really sound that different? Not through your pedal board. I, <laughs> but look, I'll, I'll look. say that what I've noticed is that guitars of different woods, guitars of different builds, guitars of different styles, they feel different. Okay, but and that's great guitars important. are not... It's not about the money. In my time of dying, it was played with a fiberboard guitar, a, a Jan Electra. Yeah, yeah. Well, they all have different <laughs> feels. I saw they him all have do different that lives, and my jaw was on the floor. They knew how to make a good guitar. Yeah. All right, so look, can I teach you something? Teach me. Take, oh, boy. Take your microphone, push the button, and pull it out, and we're <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, that, well, you that, you know. <laughs> Thank you for that. We don't get views from that. Thank you for the views, Paul. Thank you, Paul. I gave you as much as I could possibly do. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well done. Oh, thank you. Oh, you guys are going to a different room. Okay.